I've always been fascinated by the revenge genre. Our protagonist makes it their entire life's purpose to kill or in some other way extract revenge on somebody else. This alone brings up some interesting questions about morality. Is the killing justified? Does killing that person make the protagonist just as bad? And what long-term ramifications come from revenge? Oftentimes in the revenge genre, it is seen as a means to an end, a conclusion to the story, and resolution for the protagonist. But when we take a step back and look at the greater context of the revenge story, the conclusion of one person's revenge story is the beginning of somebody else's. When you grow up, if you still feel raw about it, I'll be waiting. In his paper titled Vengeance in Popular Culture, Peter Robson discusses the context of what makes the revenge genre so popular. Some of the examples that he brings up are that it's built into a lot of modern legal systems, revenge stories date back further than the Bible, and it seems to be a part of all of us. Our natural reaction towards revenge is oftentimes a positive one. My favorite vengeance films are the ones that challenge the norms of other revenge films, where the protagonist has to do more than simply defeat the antagonist. Ones full of real emotional growth where the film's central conflict is an internal one, not just an external one of violence. Violence is part of the internal struggle, but it's by no means the entire story. There are a handful of filmmakers who handle this perfectly. Park Chan-wook, Clint Eastwood, Sergio Leone, but my favorite example of this, and what I want to focus on in today's video, is Juan Jose Campanella's 2009 Oscar winning The Secret in Their Eyes, and in particular, what it does to subvert the tropes found within the revenge genre. There are three elements that I want to focus on in this video that Campanella along with co-writer Eduardo Sacheri are able to do to challenge the tropes in the traditional revenge story. The film's structure is unique. It cuts back and forth in between two different timelines, one in the mid-1970s and the other in the late 90s. Both of these focus on Benjamin Esposito, an Argentinian federal justice agent who became obsessed with the investigation of the brutal rape and murder of a young woman, Liliana Collado, in 1974. He makes it his life's goal in finding and prosecuting the man responsible. Through a morally questionable investigative process, Benjamin and his colleague and one true friend Pablo are able to find the identity of the murderer, Isidoro Gomez. In order to put Gomez behind bars, they harm their reputation, harm their career. Y si me llama mi colega de Chivilcoy, muy enojado para contarme que dos empleados de mi juzgado asaltaron la casa de una pobre vieja. And it ends up being all for nothing. Due to corruption after a year served, Gomez is released. Isidoro Gomez, violación seguida de muerte, detenido a la orden del juzgado. El servicio penitenciario nos informa que ha sido liberado por orden del poder ejecutivo. Averiguamos. Despite that, Benjamin and Pablo still try to put Gomez back behind bars, an attempt that ends in the assassination of Pablo. No! 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 Benjamin's obsession led to the death of his best friend and also prevented him from living the life that he wanted to live. He always hoped to be able to marry Irene, another federal agent who had a similar interest in him. However, his obsession with Gomez meant deprioritizing his time with her. In 1999, while reflecting on the case, he realizes how much he had lost. His friend, a potential wife, and 25 of his years were wasted. I find myself constantly thinking about the past, uh, the things that I did wrong, the decisions that I made 20 years ago, how they impact on today. In 1999, his search continues, only to find out that Ricardo Morales, the husband of the victim, took matters into his own hands. Morales tracked down Gomez after he was released, kidnapped him, and has kept him in prison for the past 24 years. To Benjamin, it all adds up to nothing. He lost so much, and in the end, it wouldn't have mattered if he was there or not. Morales would have solved the problem either way. It's worth pointing out that Morales' translation in English is morals or values. With his character, the question of what is right and what is wrong is raised. Morales keeps Gomez as a prisoner, a constant reminder of the pain of what Gomez took from him. There is nothing right about the situation. In order to try and fill the hole that Gomez created in his life, 
Morales just made it bigger, breaking down the essence of what made him good. He is now, in some ways, just as bad as Gomez. But the film's main message is ultimately about how we deal with trauma. And I think this cuts to the root of every revenge story. Bad things are inevitable. There's nothing we can do to change that. But we do have a choice moving forward. We can follow the same path that Benjamin followed. Let our obsession of the past corrupt our future. But the film says that isn't what we should do. Instead, we should learn from the past and look to make the future the best that it can be. This ties into the film's message about political corruption in the military dictatorship of Argentina. Without trying to turn this into a history lesson, in the 1970s, tens of thousands of civilians went missing. The government was corrupt and life seemed to stop. In the movie, this is akin to the rape and murder of Liliana. Gomez is the embodiment of the military dictatorship and Benjamin is the stand-in for the people. And the film's message is to learn from the past, but also to embrace the future, and most of all ensure that such a travesty never happens again. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed. The Secret in Their Eyes is one of the best movies of the past decade, and I don't feel like it gets enough attention these days. They remade it a few years ago and just made a complete mess of everything, so if you're planning on rewatching it, which I absolutely recommend, make sure you watch the Argentinian version. Last video I said that this video is going to be a follow up to another video that I made in the past and it wasn't. I was planning and still am planning to go a little bit deeper into the film noir genre. That episode is going to require a lot more research so it is coming soon but it might be another week or two. Anyway, if you're new here make sure you hit that subscribe button. I have a new video going up every Saturday. In case you missed it, I put a link to my last video essay on A Clockwork Orange and what it says about humanity. Make sure you check that video out if you're interested and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.